if you rappers and you singers and you actors decide to look the other way for somebody who continues to disrespect us, going on the fucking show and going to get your money, he offered me 10000 they, they, They all in my comment, they said the dude's net worth is $5 million. How the fuck did you get $5 million? You got $5 million off of black culture, culture vulture. Let's be real. When you want to get an exclusive interviews from the hip hop world, one of the first platforms you are most likely to check is Vlad TV. It's one of the biggest YouTube channels for getting one on one rapper interviews. But the name behind the channel has been one that incites anger in the entertainment industry, especially among rappers. Some believe DJ Vlad is a snitch and profits off of street violence to make his pockets fat. All of these allegations have led to DJ Vlad being in the black book of so many rappers and some have even gone as far as physically attacking the hip hop journalist. But what exactly is DJ Vlad doing that's making people not want to be associated with him? How come some entertainers give him a chance while others watch from the sidelines? In this video, we are going to shed light on these questions and the beefs that have come alongside them. Before the beef. DJ Vlad, whose real name is Vladimir Lubovny, has always considered himself to be a student of hip hop right from the days of being a student at the University of California, Berkeley. He had always been interested in music and decided to get into the music scene through DJing and some other activities. Although he was studying computer science and could have easily decided to pick a lucrative career in tech, he felt like his true calling was music. According to Vlad, he said, I kind of reached this point where I was like, I really want to do music. Let me try to concentrate and try to do music as well. DJing came naturally to him, so it was easy for him to forge a path in that line. Vlad then decided to launch a website called DJVlad.com and started posting MP3 files of his mixtapes, which actually garnered attention. He was the first person to ever do that according to him. In his words, I was the first person to ever do that because I really didn't have an outlet. I lived in the Bay Area in California and there were no Africans on Canal Street over there so it was really all I could do. People are always excited to find new ways to listen to music and when they discovered Vlad's website with lots of mixtapes, it made the site successful and profitable. A year after the success of his website, Vlad traveled to New York City in hopes of becoming the biggest DJs out there. He released a mixtape series called Rap Phenomenon and his site and brand as DJ Vlad continued to grow but he didn't find the success or popularity he thought he was going to get. Many people moved to New York hoping they would get their big break after a few months but they turned out unlucky and DJ Vlad was one of those people. However, unlike the other people who ran back to where they came from, Vlad stayed and decided to start DJing in strip clubs to pay rent. Knowing that being a DJ in a strip club can only sustain you for so long, Vlad started making hip hop DVDs and continued to reach a new audience. Around the same time, other DJs also started selling mixtapes, which led to a reduction in sales for Vlad. So in 2008, Vlad decided to start a YouTube channel called Vlad TV, and that was when things really started looking up for him. When DJ Vlad started his YouTube channel, it was met with so much skepticism, but that didn't stop him from being deterred. One major reason skeptics were pissed was because they felt the name Vlad TV was too sophisticated for a YouTube channel and they were trying to project their fear of failure onto him. I mean, it was a good thing that Vlad didn't give up on the channel because it had turned out to be among the top 10 news channels on YouTube alongside ABC News and Associated Press. He saw the vision and adapted to fit his new environment. Vlad was also getting some backlash on his channel because it was obviously centered on the hip hop community which many rappers felt like he couldn't relate to. But in the end, the channel ended up raking in an insane amount of views. Of course, with success comes beef and Vlad has come to rack up quite a few of those too. DJ Vlad vs Rick Ross When DJ Vlad started his YouTube channel, he soon realized that only reporting on day to day rap news wouldn't cut it. So he decided to start instigating rappers that had issues with each other. He invited them to come on the show and highlight the issues they had with their ops. Obviously this was a tactic to further incite anger between the rappers involved. When he couldn't capitalize on the beef they had with each other, he made sure to dig into the past of his guests and put them in uncomfortable positions. In a long deleted interview, Vlad asked Rick Ross questions about his days as a correctional officer. Rick Ross is known for rapping about being the biggest gangster and drug dealer but when he started having issues in 50 Cent, it was soon revealed that Rick Ross was a fraud and shouldn't be trusted because 
he used to be a CEO. DJ Vlad, seeing how much attention the topic was garnering, decided to hop on the bandwagon and drill Rick Ross about his days in uniform. At the 2008 Ozone Awards, which took place after the interview, Rick Ross ambushed DJ Vlad and beat him to a pulp. Vlad was terribly injured afterwards and slammed Ross with a lawsuit and got a settlement of $300,000. After that incident, Vlad brought somebody who claimed to be the real Rick Ross on his show. But of course, there was no way Rick Ross could strike again or else he was risking going to jail. This is the boss Ricky Ross and I'm sitting here with DJ Greg Vlad. He trying to set me up. He want me to be a defendant, but it won't work. <laughs> $300,000? I'm talking about this fight didn't even last around. No. We, <laughs> and, and I ain't even fight. I ain't fight. DJ Vlad versus Joe Button. DJ Vlad and Joe Button are two of the big names in podcasting, but they seem to have always been at odds. They have never really had a real relationship, but what happened between them to spark this beef? When Vlad was interviewed by Adam22, he told a host that he believes his issues with Button started when Vlad was visiting a strip club in New York. Vlad was partying with someone who was a supposed murderer. According to Vlad, Joe Button was afraid to enter the club because of his killer associate, which already sounds incredibly sus. When Joe Button got on his podcast to talk about their issue, he made it very clear that he didn't roll with Vlad because he didn't trust him. Joe Budden found it cowardly that Vlad would trigger people to get controversial content and then hit them with a lawsuit if they decide to slide on him. Vlad has characteristics of a snitch and considering the fact that he is only in hip hop to capitalize on the violence within the genre, Budden wasn't cool with that. When Joe Budden was still building his rap career, he had beef with another rapper named Ransom. Vlad brought attention to a comment Button made and then went on to bring Ransom onto his show and ask for more information on the beef. So Vlad basically threw gas on the fire and it ended up turning into a major issue in the streets. Button and his crew actually went to a homie's block while recording and jumped Ransom and his crew. The Ransom, Randy Nichols, got on the camera and said all of this fabricated bullshit and you clicked on it. So, what is there to do but take the camera and go straight to your block? According to Vlad, shots were even fired. After this, Ransom showed up at Button's house with a group of dudes. While recording everything, the two groups started going off on each other, and then one of Ransom's people slapped someone in the face. I'm not going to involve my younger brother in it when it's really a no. joke. No. Vlad decided to take the video and put it out on the internet and it went crazy viral. Of course, Vlad was trying to capitalize on this entire incident without any concern for what it would happen if each of these men continued to retaliate on each other. Thankfully, Joe realized what was happening and took the high road and publicly tried to squash the beef with Ransom. Man, it's crazy to think if one of them would have eventually gone too far, someone would have ended up dead. But Vlad, it was all about getting as many views as possible without a concern for these people's lives. And that is why Joe Budden called out Vlad for his approach on his own YouTube channel. This beef continued on another radio show with Vlad calling in claiming that covering the conflict between Joe and Ransom wasn't real journalism. Budden spared no words, letting Vlad know that he was tripping if he thought that whatever he was doing was real journalism, saying it was an insult if he actually considered himself to be a journalist. After the epic showdown, DJ Vlad seemed to go into an obsessive spiral because he immediately started interviewing everybody that had something negative to say about Joe Budden. He interviewed all of Budden's exes and kept probing them about the rapper's drug addiction, almost as if he was a cop. After over 50 interviews dedicated to Joe Budden, Vlad told his production crew to stop as if he was trying to bury the hatchet. But in reality, people know that DJ Vlad only stepped back because Joe Budden started his own podcast, which meant Joe had the potential to do the same slandering as Vlad. DJ Vlad vs Royce the 5'9 Budden told Zero Lies when he called out Vlad for being a coward. Considering how he always instigates trouble and then hides when he has to take responsibilities for his actions. Vlad has a tendency to approach all his guests as if he has some premeditated plot to anger them. When he is not verbally attacking his guests, he is making remarks to get under people's skin and when he is faced with the repercussions, he backs down. Which is the major reason Royce the 5'9 dislikes him. 
Royce the Five Nine has never hidden his hatred for Vlad and has even gone so far as applauding people who turned down interviews of him. In 2021, Royce seemed to have gotten some sort of epiphany about a situation. Juvenile had taken shots at Young Buck on one of DJ Vlad's interviews. Juvenile let the world know that he hated Young Buck because of something Buck had said about him prior. Royce went live after that interview aired and said, How he chooses to handle Buck is his choice. But I'd be remiss not to point out that we get so triggered by each other and we are so quick to cut each other off, forgetting that there's a common denominator here. He then posted a clip of the interview with the caption, Eliminate Vlad because his platform is a direct threat to our strength. We don't need him. Rap beefs have existed since the dawn of hip hop, but with channels like Vlad TV, there is a platform to highlight these feuds forever and continue to give energy to the situations. As if Vlad inciting rage in the hip hop community wasn't enough, he decided to go after the nation of Islam. During an interview with DL Hughley, Vlad asked about the comedian's opinion on Minister Farrakhan saying that members of the Nation of Islam should stone Jews. In reality, Farrakhan said members of the religion should use the figurative stone of truth against people who lie about being Jews. Vlad's misrepresentation of what Farrakhan said led to outrage from the group who started signing petitions to have the interview taken down. Royce then made a video asking Vlad to apologize if he wanted both of them to have a relationship. I did a video telling him that I want him to apologize. But I simply stated, if you don't apologize, then you can't have a relationship with me. I feel like it's Vlad disrespecting the culture. And this is only appropriate in this business because we allow it. In a true capitalist response to the video, Vlad said he would only apologize if Farrakhan agreed to come for an in-person interview on Vlad TV. Royce found that to be further insulting and marveled at Vlad's audacity. Vlad seems to only have a lot of hate and anger to incite when it comes to the black community. It's no wonder black rappers continue to push against him and his channel. One of the rappers that had pushed back on Vlad is Lil Durk. He even dissed him in one of his songs when he rapped, I don't f with Vlad. DJ Vlad vs Lil Durk DJ Vlad and Lil Durk's beef started when Durk agreed to be on one of Vlad's interviews. During their discussion, Lil Durk revealed that he was about to have a child with his girlfriend India, but he didn't want that kind of sensitive information out of the public, so he asked Vlad to delete that part of the video. Now, there are so many possible reasons why Dirk didn't want his private information out there. For example, he may be trying to keep his family safe, especially considering all his game associations. But Vlad being Vlad didn't take that part of the video out, which obviously pissed off Dirk. During an interview with DJ Academics, Vlad revealed that it was unintentional for that part of the video to appear. Vlad claimed that he told his writers, producers, and video editors to cut that part of the interview out but they went ahead and left it. The problem now is, did that video not pass through anybody before it was finally uploaded? If that video went through multiple people, how come all of them missed the instructions to cut that part out? It seems like DJ Vlad may have left that part of the video and thought he could get every repercussion to go away if he just apologized. But that's not how it works, especially with Dirk. I am still the president of the company, and I just want to personally apologize to Dirk and India because I know when it comes to children, this is a very important thing and it's a permanent thing. And announcing the birth of your child or the gender of your child, I know is very important. And I think that by us accidentally doing that, that took away from, you know, yeah. the, the grandeur of the whole thing. So I'm sorry. I, I, I'm very sorry that this happened. I think that's big, Black. I didn't think you were going to watch this. Oh, no, man, I, I thought you were going to be like, well, it's probably just miscommunication. Like, No, man, I'm like sorry. Point. I'm sorry. I understand how important family is. And I know that when it comes to family and when it comes to affecting someone that's close to you, whether it's your wife or your child's mother or your child or your mother or your father or your sibling, that relationship is a permanent relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? A friendship or a business associate is temporary most of the time. Right. It's we could be friends or business associates. And then the next day we can never talk to each other again. You know, like me and Dirk have never talked to each other again. You know what I'm saying? So I understand that when it comes to these types of situations, um, a priority is set. I mean, he's still with India. So yeah. him him doing another interview with me or whatever, she's going to look at him and go like, is this is this the motherfucker who, yeah, 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 who yeah. messed up our gender reveal?
Other than just being slimy like he was with the Dirk interview, some people get annoyed because of his ignorance and insensitivity to social issues. One of those people that found this trait annoying was Charlemagne. DJ Vlad vs Charlemagne Charlemagne and DJ Vlad have known each other since 2005 and have managed to have a long-term friendship despite an industry that always puts people against each other. However, when Vlad let his insensitivity get the better of him, Charlemagne came through with some beef. After Bankroll Fresh got killed in 2016 by No Plug, DJ Vlad brought No Plug in his channel and asked him to share his side of the story. After the interview dropped, Charlemagne was angry because Bankroll Fresh had just been killed and all Vlad could think of was how to profit off the situation. Charlemagne got on Joe Budden's podcast and called out Vlad for his ignorance, which led to them not talking for a very long time. It wasn't the only time Charlemagne called him out for this as he did something similar during the shooting incident between Techstone and Troy Ave. When you're, when you're a journalist is what you just said, right? If you want to interview one side, you got to have a conversation with the other side. That never happened. Like there was never any conversation, you know, from Taxton in regards to, you know, the things, the things that that Troy would say. Although Charlemagne and Vlad have now squashed their beef, Charlemagne spared no feelings in letting Vlad know that it was irresponsible to only hear from one side. The person just lost their life and their families had to deal with grief. The sensible and compassionate thing would be to shield the grieving family from anything that might rationalize their loved one's passing, but Vlad honestly didn't care. Whatever fattens his pockets is what he will do. The same insensitivity he showed towards Bankroll Fresh was the same he showed with his half-hearted apology towards Lil Dirt. DJ Vlad vs WAC 100 DJ Vlad always seems to be on bad terms with people that give him access to their space. Sometimes he even destroys the vibe of the space and then tries to play victim when things go south, which was the case with WAC 100. Around 2014, Vlad was allowed on the set of a music video for WAC 100 and he started taking pictures. He didn't ask for permission before taking pictures and neither did he ask for permission before posting them. If he was taking pictures of himself and posting, no one would have cared. Instead, he was taking pictures of the set and the Kim Kardashian lookalike that was brought by WAC 100's crew. Hours after the shoot ended, DJ Vlad uploaded those photos, including the one with the Kim K lookalike, and that got WAC 100 hot. WAC 100 called Vlad and threatened him. And instead of an apology, Vlad just said to himself that it was probably time to stop talking to WAC. DJ Vlad always amplifies drama and conflicts within the hip hop community, and according to fans, his presence is completely unnecessary. He sheds light on a lot of issues that people would have otherwise ignored in the hip hop scene. At the same time, he fuels the animosity between entertainers promoting hatred and unnecessary attacks on each other. According to Joe Budden, DJ Vlad is a smart man, and he knows the implication of every move he makes. He tends to interrogate his guests as if they are at a detective's table and the police are using his interviews as evidence. For this reason alone, it's completely understandable that these rappers feel like they should take a step back. Is what he's doing real journalism? The whole point of journalism is to get to the truth of every situation. But for DJ Vlad, his style of journalism is to be as controversial as possible and get people fired up. Do you agree with Vlad or is it time for him to rebrand and take his place as the number one gossip channel in the hip hop community? We are dying to see what you guys think about the topic and if you like this video, make sure you check out these others. We appreciate everyone watching and helping us by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Make sure to hit the bell so you know when we come out with new videos. And as always, we will see you in the next one.